Neat. So now we're casting. Going to go on to uh, Scrap Station. Minigun versus Psy. And obviously, you're probably going to see Mutalisks out of Psy in this map. It's just fantastic for map control. And that's one thing I feel like is a hole for Protoss. It almost forces them to go air. Um, and well, I was hold your horses there, Diggity. Out. It's not necessarily a given that he'll go Mutalis, it's just that he can, which which he can, you're right, you're right. Looks like we have Minigun starting at the 12 o'clock location, 3 o'clock location, we have Psy as the green Zerg. But that, yeah, that's the truth, is there's a lot of options for Zerg. Basically, because it's almost like Lost Temple with a Thor drop mm -hmm. on the ridge for Terran versus Pro or Terran yes. versus anyone, really. Is because you have that option, because it's such a viable option, it opens up yes. so much for you. Yeah, and I'm sorry to cut you off there. I, I guess no, that's okay. the analysis I was trying to give is that it's not necessarily true that they open mutas on this map. It's just that if they do, it has such potential with those exposed mineral lines and the huge distances around the map that the Protoss almost has to take it into account blindly, or at least pursue the information that will lead them to uh, the definition of muta, you know, the muta opening. Um, and in doing that, they again, they extend themselves a little bit. So it, it's one of those maps where that's such a good strategy that actually not doing it is, is just as good as doing it, because they, they basically have to counter that and everything else at the same time. So that's why it makes for a good map. Yeah, the other thing I think is key is that Zerg, just because of that wide open space in between overlords and the scouting information that they can grab, the way they can float over that natural expansion, it's a lot easier for them to gather information, and it's a lot more difficult for opponents to deny that information to them. I'm actually seeing a gas first opening mm -hmm. here from Psy, probably going to see a spawning pool not too long, actually pretty early gas here. And it looks like Minigun scouting immediately after Pylon, so he is going to see this. Is actually moving up to try to block that Pylon off, uh, or sorry, Pylon off, spawning pool off. He's opening up with a gate on his front door, so no proxy shenanigans. That looks like Psy already has that Overlord floating out. Um, is actually moving up to the north a little bit before moving it off. Um, still hasn't sent out that second Overlord towards the Nationals. Actually kind of pinned it over that. Uh, just wanted to check out that. I actually like that positioning, just in case there was something proxy happening there. But Minigun has the scouting information, has seen the spawning pool opening. Let's see how he reacts. Yeah, actually pretty solid standard openings thus far from both our players. Um, you know, this map is actually, it has been over, not overplayed, but it's been kind of a, the fear for Protoss versus Zerg here has been a little bit misconstrued. It's not quite as bad as, you know, even I was just making out to be only moments ago. You can still do like a three gate fast expand here, um, or even like the five gate timing that we saw from Minigun only the game prior. It's just where... Uh, it kind of gets to that mid-game point where it's either Mutas, Hiders, or Roaches, oh my, that you kind of have to be like, okay, what am I going to commit to, and what do I think he's going to do? Because if you try to grab everything, um, you're going to end up dumping your groceries on the pavement. That's actually an excellent, I like that analogy. If you try to grab everything, you dump your groceries on the pavement, and I'm going to ride on that, actually. looks like a couple Zerglings initially produced speed upgrade from Psy instead of going into layer first. He's actually moving out to, uh, so definitely wants to have some of that information. Denial is also placing that hatchery at his natural expansion. And getting uh, and just, yeah, it looks like the four Zergling Assault to make sure that additional probes or zealots uh, have a little bit more difficulty scouting out in the field. Nice kind of front door block, very standard for Protoss, and it looks like we are seeing the Cybernetics Core being warped up there as well as a sentry production out of that gateway. So, yeah, very standard play both directions from both these players. Sign now sending out that second Overlord to kind of get that scouting information already has, again, that Overlord over the natural so we can get a good look when Miniguns expanded. So everything progressing pretty much, yeah, standard, and it's going to be, uh, I think it's... Uh, go ahead. I saw, a well, I saw a Stargate queued up. There it is. Okay, so the Stargate opening um, from our Protoss player, and, and I like that. You know, I think that really shakes things up. A lot of Zergs want to open up Roaches on just about any map, this one included. Um, so, it, you know, whether he goes Phoenix or Void Ray, both have a lot of utility on this map. Uh, again, with that close airspace, but also with the long land distance means that they have a lot of, uh, you know, they can abuse their mobility. That's where, like, the flight ability actually comes into play big time. Um, so right now we just have the Protoss moving up, picking off a Zergling. Psy realizing that he is being harassed, kind of uh, a reaction. like, hey, and then he like, does a little run pattern past the Protoss buildings uh, and sees nothing. So actually another gateway going down. So it's going to be interesting to see, is this, a, is this another timing, like a three-gate Stargate timing with the Void Rays, which there's the Void Ray. Or is this an expansion opening? I'm not quite sure. I do want to comment on the beautiful positioning of this Stargate, just at the far corner. Void Ray is actually opening up here, and it's going to—it's very difficult for Psy oh. to get that overward in position. He might be able to right position side view. Uh, just he so sees it. Perfect look, and he does see it, so he's going to be in a yep. nice position to react. So Psy with the suicide hero overlord dying for the cause wow. there. Wow. 
It's going to be able to see the Stargate. It's going to see it whirling. It's going to be able to, and woof, almost lost to Absinthe again, um, is going to be able to react thoughtfully here. And per- perhaps yeah. actually he has op- opened up roaches, but he can get some additional queens out to help cope with that. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting. Re- it was actually like the most brilliant sacrificial overlord. Uh, and then, like, at the same time, it throws down a roach warren. So it's like, aha, you're going void raise? Well, I raise you roaches. And that's like, uh, I mean, he does have four queens, which is fantastic. Uh, but I would like to see, like, an evolution chamber, just more lings or something. He, he still is not sure if this is a, a, a base timing or if this is an expansion opening. Because that void ray, it's just going to go around, kill overlords, kind of get a read for their opponent. And here we do. You know, the queens just kind of uh, tick a little away. They're like, please leave. We'll throw these stones at you until you do. And then they hop around in their skirt. Uh, and that way, we're just going to get that information. And if you actually look back at the Protoss base, he's building a second one, uh, and he's got the money in position. There it is, so that Nexus does go down. So this will be a, kind of a macro opening. I appreciate that. Yeah, one of the nice things about this is you can uh, more or less... That's the one thing versus Zerg compared to Terran is, is you can still do this and still send Zerglings at, at that natural expansion, but the Void Rays um, still create some some problems. And, oh, man, that Void Ray now at the natural, also diving into the main, just trying to pick off where they can, trying to split the Queen Forces. Looks wow. like he's going to be successful in doing so. And Minigun, with the, what I would consider a very fantastic and a very successful harass thus far, five kills on one Void Ray, and it looks like just two kills on the other. But definitely, I'm in a third Void Ray to come, really keeping Psy confused, really splitting his forces. Now the Evolution Chamber, but you also have a Robo, a Forge, and an expansion up for Minigun in the meantime. Mm-hmm. And definitely, Niggity, I just got word from our field crew that White Raw is down 01 to 1 Januk. Yes, I actually heard that, and I was going to comment. Unbelievable. So we had Januk, who really wasn't one of the guys that people thought um, would give a lot of harassment as far as the voting went against the pros. He's actually beaten White Raw. We'll keep you posted on that. Two queens trying to engage these Void Rays. The Void Rays just tossing off uh, back and forth, and that is a lot of queens now for Psy. Yep. Looks like that Void Ray, they're still doing a great job harassing, just bringing up the economy tab. You have Minigun with a huge advantage. Has 39, almost 40 harvesters compared to uh, 28 for Psy. Psy not feeling good just now sending out Zerglings with speed towards that natural. Looks like it's pretty well blocked off, and I actually didn't get a view of this earlier. I love this beautiful block off from Minigun. There's a Photon Cannon just about to warp in with that Sentry. He basically has a perfect seal. Oh, he's going to miss the Sentry block. Um, just a couple Zerglings flooding through, so actually splitting that force in half and doing a good job. That Photon Cannon is not warped in yet, so this could be pretty risky, So, uh, but it looks like it is going to hold. Sight is going to back off. Now trying to open up the Destructible Rock. I don't think he's going to be in time. It looks like that Cannon is warping in. In the meantime, Zealot's coming off the front to try to push those Zerglings back. It looks like he will be successful in doing so. And several of the Voidry's actually coming back home now after a successful venture. Um, but yeah, I gotta say, Minigun's in a great position currently. Psy, though, feeling comfortable, feeling like, well, I did the harass, the Void Rays are backing off, I'm just gonna produce a ton of drones. Um, so actually catching up very quickly in the Harvester count, comparably, he's actually now fielding Mutalisks of his own. And you also have Colossus that are being fielded out for Minigun. So uh, the question is, is will be will Psy be able to really stop Minigun, uh, Minigun's mid-game army now with his composition? Well, if he wants a chance, I'm really hoping he does this. you got to wait for the critical number of mutas. So don't move out. Don't show a mutalist with, like, nine, you know, like or not nine, but, like, five or six. Because, yes, they will be held off, but then also these Colossus will be opted out. And Phoenix will start to come out. Cannons will go up in the mineral lines, etc. I would really like to see, oh, my God, that Observer just spotted him. So never mind. My hopes and dreams dashed against the stone like Spartan babies. Uh, oh. And the mutas are going to have to move out. <laughs> <laughs> So six mutalists are moving to the mineral lines. The cannons are already up, uh, and we do not have a Stargate reaction, but we do have, oh, just terrible amounts of damage going against one mutalist. Almost like a prejudicial moment, too, because none of the other ones have gotten hit. It was just that one guy who was wondering what he did to deserve such pain. But, uh, again, it's just just too bad. I mean, it's actually really good play. Let's give credit to Minigun where it's deserved. That observer kind of saved him a whole big headache. So uh, props to him. Really nice placement as well. Looks like some overlords uh, cycling. I'm not sure what's with those overlords moving to the top left corner. I assume we're not going to see some sort of mid or late game drop with Zerglings at a weird position there. It looks like they're not loaded up anyway. Um, Psy is opening up that bottom right to get a distance expansion on what's kind of that land island, I'll call it. But the Mule is starting to move forward. They want to try to get some harassment done over that natural expansion. There are cannons there, and those Void Rays have been playing (laughs) just a huge role absolutely huge role and this is unfortunate because right as these mulesks are moving out of position minigun moving forward with a sizable army towards size natural expansion yep and it's a very specific army too it's like uh this is a pretty interesting timing 
If you look conversely over at Size Army, he's really caught with his pants down. He's trying to take a third here. He does have a strong lean count and some mutilus, so uh, it'll be, you know, there's a lot of zealots there is what, is what worries me. Otherwise, if he had just, like, stalkers or something, like this heavy zergling count could be quite potent, but as it is, I think those uh, zealots would just cut right through it, and it's just going to be a question of what the mutilus can do. Uh, and as time goes on, I mean, the situation for Side does get better, but it looks like uh, Root Minigun's not going to allow him that amount of time. He's just moving forward, so we do have Zerglings in the back. Are they going to realize that they need to be helped up here? I'm not quite sure. Okay, there they do. They're going to swing around. And here we go with the big timing. Some Corruptors are mixed into that. Actually, just one. Mutal is pushed forward, doing a lot of damage. One Colossus goes down to the Zerglings. Zerglings joining up. The Zealots are kind of in a forward position, not really helping out, but it looks like this just might be too much. Oh, it looks like, yeah, just too much. The Mule is going to be taken care of. Still a couple of Void Rays to stand. Sai's army has been uh, more or less taken care of, and it looks like it's just going to be an even trade here. But keep in mind, Sai lost an additional base. He's still locked to second expansion. He's actually placing down an additional hatchery to perhaps go a little bit Zergling heavy. So even though Minigun lost his army, which definitely isn't something he wanted, I think he wanted a killing blow there, um, Sai is still locked to two bases and in a very dis uh, very desperate situation, and Sai should be able to or, sorry, Minigun should be able to replenish that without too much trouble. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think an, an even trade is what either player wanted in that situation, uh, for obvious reasons. That was kind of a silly comment. But um, I'm liking where the Zerg's going. I, I like these macro hatches he's putting down. I, I'd rather they be a little bit more uh, intuitively timed. I think that they've been placed thus far as kind of a reactionary, like, oh, crap, I didn't spend my money. Um, so, I mean, excellent play by side thus far. I don't want to take it away from him, but certainly uh, needs to clean that up a little bit if he hopes to take down a player like Minigun. But we do see that uh, Stargate play being phased out, at least to a certain extent. Just a couple of Phoenix. Uh, actually, he's adding more Phoenix as I say that. So this uh, this Roach composition coming out of Psy right now could be actually really, really potent, especially if he gets the amount of money that he needs from that third phase to also start going Corruptors with that. Yeah, so actually starting to move out with some cor basically Corruptor Roach, and the problem with this is he doesn't have the gas really to mm -hmm. continually work with this army unless he establishes an additional base, and there is an Observer for Sight hanging out. It, he sees that army, he sees that hatchery coming up. My guess is he's not going to let that stand for too long. Starting to move forward now with his Colossi, with his Phoenixes to engage this. Looks like Sai actually creeping up that, uh, what he assumes is going to be an additional expansion here um, from Minigun, but Minigun starting to move out, starting to establish some position of his own, and yeah, that's actually a pretty scary army. I got to say from from Sai, a lot of roaches to deal with anything on the ground, specifically Colossi underneath uh, the corruptors to provide some defense as well. And really, uh, honestly, I don't know that Minigun's composition currently will be able to cope with that very well. But we'll, well see in a moment. It's going to be all about positioning. I mean, if he can spread out these roaches and get those lings back there to confuse the AI of the Colossus, then yeah, his army is very potent. But also, we see corruptors being added to the mix here. Um, not a lot of stalkers, not a lot of phoenix, and only one void ray for the Protoss player. Um, so it's going to be kind of a question of, of who's going to build up to that final tipping point first, but it looks like Sai getting a little bit impatient. I don't like that choice. Moving forward, and he's just uh, he's segmenting his own army as if there's force fields abound, but there really aren't, so these Corruptors are now focused down. One Colossus, and they kind of kill a Phoenix only to die. It looks like Sai has been kind of uh, caught in a moment of indecision, I would say. Just kind of move forward, move back, move forward. But with those range 9 Colossus, it really punishes you. One Colossus yeah. does go down, but at what cost? I mean, it looks like all these stalkers are going to clean up. Yeah, and it looks like I assume Minigun's going to be able to walk through, and despite size reinforcements, he may be able to take this out eventually, but I still think he's going to end up losing this space. That's going to cut Sai off from that additional gas that he desperately needs in this build, as, as well as a, this is a very expensive army. He needs a lot of that additional production. The Stalker's still there. Now the Phoenix is very cleverly lifting off those roaches to minimize their ability, and as long as uh, I think Minigun's going to win this, as long as he focuses on this hatchery right at the stage, which, which it looks yeah, like he's is, doing right it's this moment. Yeah, it's snowballing. You know, I mean, yeah, once the Protoss Death Ball starts rolling and the Zerg just kind of rallies into it. It's like throwing stuff into a wood chipper, like straight out Oof. of Fargo. It's just not going to go Overlords. Anywhere. Overlords. Overlords. Looks like they're rallied right over this army. Just to, They're like, oh, we'll get into the fight. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Uh, and then it's a weird overlord migration going on in this game. Yeah, exactly. Just exploding right there. Minigun has his third up and running. It looks like his main um, is mined out, so technically just still running off two bases, but he's in a much better position than Psy. If you look at that drone saturation, wow, that natural could not really... You could not <laughs> put more drones in I there. want a Psy storm. It's so damn bad. <laughs> yeah, that looks like... It, or it a, look a cool. StarCraft 1 Reaver in there. Which is oh, cool. yes. 
Well, oh my gosh, um, absolutely beautiful and, or, and immortal to try to deal with just the uh, overwhelming amount of roaches at this stage. But oh man, it's engaging, really not in the best, particularly there's GG. Yeah, 